Welcome to Dark Knight Films Reviews. I'm your host, Matt Spies, and today we are looking at Psycho 2, released in 1983. Psycho 2 stars Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, Robert Loggia, Meg Tilly, Dennis Franz, Hugh Gillen, Robert Allen Brown, and Claudia Breyer. Psycho 2 is directed by Richard Franklin. Now, Robert Block had written a novel in 1982 that he titled Psycho 2. But he, he wrote it as more of a satire of... Hollywood slasher films. Universal did not like that original novel, so instead of adapting the novel like they did the original film, they went to Tom Holland and had him write a completely new take on a follow-up to Psycho. They had seen Richard Franklin, an Australian director's films that he had done, Patrick in 1978 and Road Games 1981, and they were impressed with his directorial skills. And it didn't hurt that Richard Franklin was a student of Alfred Hitchcock. But before they even decided to do anything, they wanted to respect the memory of Alfred Hitchcock. So they went to Pat Hitchcock and they asked her, are you okay with us doing this? And uh, as soon as Pat Hitchcock heard that they were not making it a satire based on Robert Bloch's novel and that they were, they had hired Richard Franklin one of the students of her father, to direct this, she immediately gave her blessing for the film. Before the script by Tom Holland was finished, though, they went to Anthony Perkins, Vera Miles, and John Gavin about reprising the roles in this film. Anthony Perkins, initially, rejected the offer because the film was pitched as a made-for-cable movie. Vera Miles accepted and was on board to reprise her role as Lila Loomis. John Gavin had to turn down reprising his role as Sam Loomis, though, because Ronald Reagan had just assigned him as the U.S. ambassador to Mexico. So he was going to be unable to play in the film. They thought about recasting Norman Bates and even were considering Christopher Walken for the role. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but once Tom Holland's script was finished, they went back to Anthony Perkins and let him read it. And by this point, the film had gone from being a made-for-cable idea to back to being a theatrical film again. Anthony Perkins was happy to hear that. And then once he read the script, he loved Tom Holland's script and, and immediately signed on then to reprise his role. And he even brought in his son, Oz Perkins, to play a young 12-year-old version of Norman in the film. Let me show you what happens to bad little boys who poison their mothers. I'm going to kill you. The rest of the cast in this film are uh, new characters, of course, and uh, a lot of them, they are just excellent new characters to this story. You have Robert Loggia 
as Dr. Bill Raymond. He is the psychiatrist to Norman Bates, who has, at this point, he has evaluated Norman in the asylum long enough to realize that he thinks he's ready to rejoin society. You start working there today, don't forget. No, I won't. I don't suppose you will. What's wrong? Oh, nothing really. I just wish there hadn't been all those cutbacks. There'd be a trained social worker to look in on you from time to time. Well, I have you, don't I? Oh, damn right you do. I had the phone reconnected. Any trouble, use it. Okay. And he's also arranged to have him work at this uh, local diner, which is run by Robert Allen Brown's Ralph Stoller. Oh. This is Norman Bates, your new helper. Hi. Get him an apron, will you, Mrs. Spool? Scott, we have to talk about it sometime. Step on it, would you, girl? You're being paid to wait on tables, not gab on the phone. Look, I'll call you back later. We'll talk then, okay? okay We're bye. getting ready for rush hour. He's really very nice once he catches his breath. Vera Miles' Lila Loomis is vehemently against this. She thinks that this is a mistake. She believes that Norman is a killer. He always will be a killer. And that this needs to be reconsidered. The judge shuts it down and agrees with Dr. Bill Raymond's decision. And Norman Bates is released. He ends up meeting a young girl played by Meg Tilly named Mary. Jesus Christ, girl, what have you broken this time? It wasn't her fault, Mr. Stanner. It was me. I, I, I did it. Well, let her pick up and you get back here before you do any more damage. Thanks. And at his motel, the Bates Motel, a man is running it, played by Dennis Franz, named Warren Toomey. Now, Warren Toomey is... Oh, this guy is a complete dick and a complete jerk. She's pretty cute. Where'd you find her? What's this stuff? Say it was drugs. What about the occupied cabins? Is that what's going on in there, too? Yeah, why well, this town? If it isn't the parents, it's the kids. I caught a couple of them screwing in the basement of your house up there last week. Of course, I threw them right out. Can you believe that? <laughs> and Dennis Franz plays him so good in this thing. Dennis Franz was such a good actor. I mean, he's like, you know, he could play, he could play assholes, he could play good guys. I mean, and he can play them equally good. But yeah, he he's great as uh, Warren Toomey in the in the scenes where. Anthony Perkins is acting with him. They have really good repertoire against each other. What kind of a motel are you running here? The kind that makes money. People come here to party. They stay a few hours and then they leave. What more are you going to ask from a motel so far from the beaten track, huh? So that they, they really feel like they hate each other and everything as characters. Because... Norman does not like how Toomey is running his motel. You're fired. Hey, you can't fire me. I was hired by the hospital. The state has no claim on me or my property anymore, and neither do you. I want you out of here tomorrow. Yeah, well, why don't you try putting me out, Mr. Wacko? Hmm? I'd like to see that. I won't have to. I'll just go to the police. I'm sure they'd be very interested in what's been going on here, especially the drugs. And that sets up Toomey being killed by some assailant. Was it Norman? Richard Franklin directs this 
from Tom Holland's amazing script with great dialogue and excellent performances all around the board. And he directs it to where you do not know whether Norman is really rehabilitated. I mean, Anthony Perkins plays him so well that you're like, you want him to succeed. You want it to be proven that he's innocent. He isn't doing these murders. But Richard Franklin also directs it in a way to where you as the audience are like, <clears throat> damn, did he really do it? Is he really the killer? Has he gone back to his old ways? Hugh Gillen plays Sheriff John Hunt, and he is, I, I, I loved his performance in here as the sheriff. He is so good. I mean, he is, he's, he's likable as a sheriff, but he's also tough as a sheriff. Have we broken some law? None that are on the books, but a whole hell of a lot of them that aren't. Like all the ones having to do with right or wrong. I'd say you and your mother just about broken every one of those, wouldn't you? I didn't mean to. Now, that's what Norman said 20 years ago. Only he was crazy. Now, what's your excuse? So he's the kind of guy that, you know, if you piss him off, he's liable to kick your ass. He looks like that kind of a character. So, um, and he plays him really well in this film. He, his, just his voice, the way he talks, his inflection. I, I, I love this character. So... Um, the only other character we have other than Mary, Warren Toomey, Sheriff Hunt, and Ralph Stoller, who runs the um, diner, is a woman who works in the diner named Emma Spool, an older woman, played by Claudia Breyer. Can I help you? I'm Norman, Norman Bates. New cook's helper. Oh, yes. Doctor, what's his name Raymond. called about you? I'm the one who urged Mr. Stadler to give you the job. I think it's very Christian to forgive and forget, don't you? I sure do. So do I. And uh, I will get something on her later. Um, and that is spoiler area. So when it gets to that point, I'll let you guys know if that sort of spoiler's coming. So if you don't want no spoilers for this movie. Now, this is a 1983 movie. So you sh if you haven't seen it, go watch it, please. Just stop watching my review right now. Go watch it, and then come back and finish my review. Okay? <laughs> but the whole plot around this thing, um, when the murders are disappearances and eventual murders are revealed to be going on with a few people getting killed, including Toomey. Dr. Bill Raymond... Robert Logia's character doesn't believe it. I mean, he truly is on Norman's side and believes that there's something else going on here. And here's where the spoilers come in. He's right. Because... And, and this is something that I don't really like about this uh, the, the script from Tom Holland and everything is that he's turned Vera Miles, our basic heroine as Lila Loomis from the original 1960 movie, into this hateful woman that's so hateful and vengeful toward Norman Bates that she can't just let it go. And she has decided to team up with her daughter, which Mary... McTilly's character is revealed to be her daughter. And Mary has befriended Norman because she's trying to help Lila to make Norman think he's lost it again so that they can get him committed again. Then when he went looking for her, I locked the attic door behind him. He was trapped in there for hours while I took everything down the back stairs. So you see, he couldn't have done it. What difference does it make? We want him recommitted. This would have done it. Mother, he's innocent. Innocent? He killed your aunt, didn't he? 
Not to mention the six other people. Mother, that was 22 years ago. Mary, people don't change. And this is just... This is just a dirty move. And, and it just... It makes you <clears throat> hate Vera Miles' character and feel even more for Norman, which <clears throat> I can see them making you feel for Norman, but don't make us hate the heroine from th the first film. And they are not doing the killing to make him go insane. They're not going that far. Someone else is doing the killings, and it isn't Norman. It turns out that Emma Spool is Norman Bates' real mother. She's the sister to Norma Bates. And she didn't want to have a child, and whenever Norman was born, she wasn't ready for it, so she gave Norman to Norma, and she ended up raising him as if he was her own. Now, some people have came out against this idea of this. I don't, I don't mind that too much. That's not a... It's not a deal breaker in this film. Now, the deal breaker for me in this film, in some ways, is the way that they did Lila. Especially her death scene. They're trying to do the making Norman think he's crazy and make him think that Mother is back and she's killing again. So she's in the basement of Norman's house. And she opens the floorboard and pulls out the, the wig and the knife that, that they had in costume dress that they had concealed down there and hid. And the, she plans on going upstairs and making Norman think he's seeing his mother so that they could push him over the edge, finally. While she's doing this, Emma Spool comes in behind her. She turns, she screams, she... <laughs> Horrible way to kill a legacy character off in such a way. <clears throat> And at the end, it's it's still revealed, you know, that that um, Norman was innocent of everything, of course. Um, and even Mary turns on him because she sees her mother dead in the in the uh, basement, and finally decides to attack Norman and starts stabbing him and, and uh, trying to kill him. And that's when the sh when uh, Sheriff Hunt comes in and shoots her. So they begin to think that Lila and Mary were killing these people and trying to pin it on Norman. And then Emma shows up at the very end to... Uh, Do her big reveal to Norman. And one of my favorite scenes happens here. Norman has just basically poisoned her with the tea. And you're thinking she's just going to die and, you know, start to go into convulsions or whatever, you know, and die. But he doesn't wait. Pardon? <laughs> Casually just sets, sets the shovel down and uh, whistling a, a little happy tune, picks her up and carries her upstairs. And while he's doing it, 
you hear mother's voice. So, yeah, Lila and Mary, they finally pushed him over the edge. And now he has a new mother to put in the window. And then we have the iconic shot of him walking out and looking back at the house that you see in the trailer and you see on the uh, poster art. And ironically, that was, they, they did that image and they took a picture of it and they were using it for like Christmas cards to promote the movie. And Universal then came up with their poster for Psycho 2, and Richard Franklin hated it. And he, he was like, no, let's go with this Christmas card image instead, and we'll use that for our poster. So, but overall, Psycho 2 is... One of the best sequels ever made. It is well written, well directed, uh, well acted, all around the board. Um, the only issues I have with it is, like, like I said, Lila. What they did with Lila. So, my rating for Psycho 2. I give this film a 9.5 out of 10. This film would have been a 10 had they not done Vera Miles' character of Lila Wilmes the way they did. Um, I subtracted um, five off of it because of that. Um, but the rest of it, I mean, uh, Robert Logia as Bill Raymond is great. Meg Tilly is awesome as Mary Loomis. Dennis Franz is excellent as Warren Toomey. Hugh Gillen like I said, is, is awesome as Sheriff Hunt. Uh, for the small scenes that he's in, uh, Robert Allen Brown is pretty cool and likable as uh, Ralph. Um, and Claudia Breyer is uh, really likable and, and good as uh, Emma Spool as well, even though she's supposed to be revealed to be your killer by the end of it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Um, if you have not seen this movie, what are you doing? Watch this thing. Now, have you seen this movie? What do you think? Do you agree with my review? Let me know in the comments down below. And, as usual, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. Because it really does help this channel out a lot. So yeah, as I said, I was going to do some 80s and 90s reviews. Well, this was the start of that. So um, if you enjoyed this, look forward to some more 80s coming up. Thank you for watching.